ש- שלום לכולם, וברוכים הבאים לכנס השנתי ה-11 של התוכנית לכלכלה וחברה. השנה בחרנו נושא שמקשר בין עובדים בעוני. כל מי שחוקר ועובד בנושאים האלה יודע להגיד שעוני זה נושא מתמשך. כלומר, זה לא נושא שאפשר לפתור אותו מהיום למחר, זה נושא שכשדנים בו צריך כל הזמן לחשוב על פתרונות ועל כלים שמפעילים אותו לאורך זמן. הנושא של עבודה בעוני הוא מאוד מרכזי בישראל. אנחנו כולנו מכירים את התהליכים, לפיהם קוצצו מאוד קצבאות הילדים, העובדים, בעצם ההשתתפות בשוק העבודה הייתה אמורה לגדול, כפי שזה קרה בפועל, והממשלה הייתה אמורה לדון בכלים תומכי, תומכי עבודה, כמו קורסים להכשרה מקצועית, מענק עבודה וכלים נוספים. בעצם המטרה שלנו בכנס היא להעלות את הנושא הזה, להעלות את הסוגיות. אתם תראו אושר של מאמרים ודיונים שמתייחסים לכלים האלה. חשוב לנו שהנושאים האלה יחזרו לאג'נדה, יחזרו לדיון הציבורי. אם מסתכלים על התקציב של 2017-2018, קצת מרגישים בחיסרון של הנושא הזה. אולי היו כן נושאים שקשורים לחברה. שקצת טופלו, אבל למשל ההמלצות שקשורות אה, לעבודה בעוני אה, שהוכללו בוועדת העוני, הן לא כל כך יושמו, חלק ניכר מהן לא יושמו, אה, ולכן מאוד מאוד חשוב שהנושא הזה יישאר באג'נדה וימשיכו לדון עליו, אה, כי כפי שאמרתי, אה, אם לא מתחילים, אז אחר כך אה, גם התוצאות אה, אה, באות הרבה יותר מאוחר, כי זה נושא מתמשך שלוקח הרבה זמן. אז אני מקווה שיהיה לכם מעניין. אנחנו עכשיו נשמע דברי פתיחה של... עוד מעט אני אעבור לאנגלית. אז so we're very glad to, to hear the opening remarks by Michael Bruchard, who is the head of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, very good, in Israel. And afterwards we'll go to... straight forward to, to the uh, papers, to the papers, as you, as you know, okay? So I hope it will be interesting for all of you. Please, Michael. Shalom lekulam, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I first have to apologize that this is all Hebrew I can uh, present to you. Uh, embarrassing enough, but it is like this. Uh, if I would be British or American, I would feel forced to start uh, with uh, some funny anecdote or witty quote, but thanks God I'm just a boring German. So I can stick to yet another cruel German habit, and that's the habit of the preliminary remark before I really start uh, with my greetings. And the first remark actually goes to our partners from the Van Leer in- Jerusalem Institute. Uh, let me put it that way. Sometimes there are, forgive me if I'm a little self-confident for the moment, partners that are or should feel honored Uh, by the participation of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung at, at their event. But there are also cases in which the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung should feel honored by the fact that she was invited to participate. And you might not wonder that in this case, the latter is actually true. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor that we are doing this together, dear Michel. Uh, please give my regard also to Professor Motzkin, who had a very integral part in also initiating this joint project. Thank you so much uh, for this valuable cooperation with an outstanding Israeli institution. We are proud that we can work with you. Thank you for the flawless partnership. We really appreciate it. Uh, that's, that's good. It was good that I waited for a moment. Second remark, uh, why are we, uh, why in the world are we as a German institution doing this? Why Germany? Well, first of all, events like this are also reflecting a significant change in the relations of Israel and Germany to be uh, fundamental for for a moment. It goes without even saying, especially three days before the International Holocaust Day, that the history will always be a very eminent part of the relations of our countries. But in the surveys, we and others did in the last years, we found out that there is indeed a remarkable shift of paradigm. For the first time, it seems that the common interest of the two countries is getting more support and is more important. 
uh, in the eyes of the Israeli public. So the next question might be, why in the world is a conference about the working poor phenomenon the right place to intensify the German-Israeli relations? Well, uh, you are a knowledgeable community, so you know that the similarities are obvious. Both of our economies are doing well, much better indeed than the neighboring countries. In both countries, there is a comparably low amount of unemployment, but still a worrisome amount of poverty. There's an alleged or factual rising gap between the rich and the poor parts of society. I'm cautious here, saying alleged uh, uh, factual rising gap. In both countries, there's a significant growth of the GDP, but there seems to be, again, an alleged or factual detachment of the GDP growth and the increase of wages. And we know that modern and successful economies uh, are, al are almost always characterized by uh, a rising inequality of two groups, skilled and unskilled workers. So even though in the details there might be still some considerable amount of differences, and we will hear about that later, between the two countries, it makes some sense to compare the two cases. And this is what we uh, are, are happy to support. Which brings me to my second big thank you. Uh, a comparison between Germany and Israel without a real expert with in-depth knowledge would be simply useless. So a very heartfelt and very warm welcome goes to Professor uh, Dr. Oni Schöp. He will be introduced later in detail. But let me just stress one point. He serves since the year 2015 in the advisory council to the German Federal Ministry of Finance, as the intention of this conference is also to give more or less good advice to the governments and to the political echelons, this seems to be a perfect match. Baruch Abba, Professor Schöp, great that you are here. Second reason why we as a German institution are very interested in co-hosting such a conference, uh, you might have expected that at least today uh, these uh, terrible NGOs are not bringing the conflict to the table. And please forgive me for spoiling the party, but I think that there's a clear connection between a possible, whatever that will be, peace agreement and what we are discussing today without a specific amount of social cohesion and societal cohesion, it will be difficult to deal with whatever peace agreement. Whoever wants to support such an agreement must take deeper interest and concern in the growing segmentation of the society in Israel. So this is also a motivation. And let me now come with the last and maybe of the biggest motivation that is driving us to support this uh, wonderful conference. And that is an exchange about, uh, about an issue or about issues that are also in the core uh, of something that is very important to the Adenauer Stiftung. You might know that after the war in Germany, the lessons of the high polarization and the huge segmentation of the society in Germany during the time of the Weimar Republic have been learned, and this experience led to the, the development of a very successful economic and societal model. I'm talking about the concept of the social market economy. And after the failure, the obvious failure of both capitalism and socialism, the idea was to find a third way in between the two extremes. Of course, each country has its very own historical and cultural heritage and development. Not everything is transferable, and it cannot be our intention uh, to, again, somehow impose uh, German ideas and German way of thinking on others, but I'm convinced that these ideas provide a unique source of inspiration. Let me just very briefly, and then I close, put some of these ideas and inherent questions of this social market economy on the table with regard to Israel and to our subject. How to establish an order which is striving for justice and some healthy amount of equality without crippling a very dynamic and functioning market economy. Is a minimum wage, which still is regarded to be one of the main cures to avoid the phenomenon of the working poor in this regard, helpful? Or is this, as has been largely discussed in Germany, uh, too hard to bear for the companies and will not allow them to provide the needed quantity of jobs and uh, uh, dynamics? Is it on the side of the employee effective enough to avoid poverty? How can a true partnership between employers and employees to be established that is ensuring a prosperous future for the company and thus also for its staff? 
And um, of, co of course, besides all the, uh, the, the other things, it is also in, important to look at, uh, uh, at the way the social partnership in Germany is working. As the history of working relations between employers and employees in Israel have been quite contentious and bear the notion of a zero-sum game, the question really is, can the way the German social partnership and the special and mostly constructive role that the trade and industrial unions are playing in this regard, can the way these social partners negotiate agreements which, compromise, uh, which comprise aspects related to wages as well as aspects related to the labor code be a role model at all? What role does education play in this regard, which is a very important part of the holistic concept of the social market economy? It seems quite obvious, and we will hear more about that later this afternoon, that the labor market cannot be the only medicine to prevent or fight poverty. And while one, and this is uh, uh, my final remark, one aspect can definitely be a role model, and that is that this concept is not a static concept, but as Ludwig Erhard, the legendary father of this model and first economic minister of Germany after the war said, it is a concept of progressive thinking, which, always, which allows a huge amount of creativity. Israel is known to be a country which is capable of thinking outside the box. And on the field of the working poor, it seems necessary more than before to do exactly that, if I might be allowed to say that. This kind of thinking also means to adopt a broader view on the role of two major parts of the Israeli population who constitute most of the poor in Israel, Arab, Israelis, and Haredim. Uh, and I think uh, this also will and should be part of what we are discussing. Let me finish with what Germany can learn from Israel in this regard, besides a lot of other Israeli virtues. Germans have a tendency to be very, very fatalistic and overly pessimistic at times, especially when it comes to socioeconomic issues. Mr. Schoep might agree to me. I think that the Israeli notion of chutzpah and of optimism is something, something that I hope will also be part of our discussion today. In this sense, our namesake, Konrad Adenauer, once said, if others think you should stop, it does not make any sense anymore, you should start over even more fiercely again. So let us start with this conference. I wish all of us a fruitful day. Toda Rabba.